Uh, well, yeah, who knows? But Infernal Shrines, uh, we are going to be hopping into game number two. Uh, looks like Ralph's Raiders actually up mm -hmm. one zero. Uh, let's change that. Make that fix. Got that advantage here in our best of five series, but uh, Infernal Shrine's first pick will be going over to Bandit Bruisers as they were the losing team from Map Narul. And someone in chat was asking why we 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 torture them with Hanamura, <laughs> because we're the casters and we decided that. That's you do why. whatever no, we want. Mostly, mostly I choose Hanamura because it's not standard drafted. Like most pe most teams want to go to Infernal Shrines, Dragonshire, Battlefield of Eternity. Like we see these maps all the time. So they're they're tried and true. They're good maps. But let's put them on something they don't feel as comfortable with. Maybe yeah. they play something awkward or weird, or you know, and that's when we can, you know, we can highlight that and be like, look at this. Cigar on Hanamura is busted, or you know, Gazlo on Hanamura. So I'm just saying, like it's gives us opportunities, plus it's also fun to kind of open up on a map that we don't see. But either way, we do have a Chen first band on the right hand side. Do we see a Samuro ban? coming out from the members of Bandits Bruisers because personally um, Valimar I mean like this is another yeah. good tomorrow map in my opinion I would I, I could I could see a world where like you could start to target Ban Valimar here um the characters on this map are so so like th there's just so many ways to draft Infernal that like if you were to want if you were to opt to like target Ban out um Valimar right like his the Chen the Samro mm -hmm. right like He's, he's now like what is he? Put? He's gonna put, he's gonna have to pick something like a Deathwing, right? Like I, Ooh, I haven't seen. I like I've only seen him play three characters. Is my point. Um, over the the, <laughs> the course of watching this, I've seen him play three characters, and those are the three. Uh, so if we can maybe force him onto one of those characters, knowing full well that this is what he'll play, then then it opens us up to things like you know, let's first pick Greymane. Um, maybe for the ability to go bullet, right? Uh, let's let's uh let's let's let you know liam take the math deal and potentially counter uh but Ooh. this on a pick very good first pick obviously legacy known for the character as well um so i like this first pick a lot it leaves the draft very wide open uh for the side of the the, the bandits bruisers i'm creeping on on profiles and and ralph's raiders they i mean they got a strong diablo player and a muradin player this is all valimar i'm just looking at their hero list right now and it's like oh, really? they, they they got some options yeah they definitely have uh like they have a, like a, a level 80 plus diablo so we could be seeing that come out from them but they're gonna go ahead and grab themselves an immediate mephisto because this is the map where we've been seeing him really pop up this and i'd say what is it infernal shrines Volskaya Foundry and Towers of Doom are like the three most popular maps that I see Mephisto on because of just the team fight, the cooldown reduction, his poke potential, his re not not so much reset, but just like cooldown on his abilities overall and yeah. his build. Like he's such a strong hero on these types of maps. And I'm really glad, like it's the same thing, like, you know, we were talking earlier about like when did Bloodlust Rhaegar become a thing? It's like, mm -hmm. well, when did Mephisto start to pop up more and more? And it's kind of because of maps like this, Chromie actually used to see. A lot of value on this map and then she that's was a juicy, nerfed and then that's a juicy pick then, right there she just got rebuffed too right and that's what i'm saying like she, yeah, she's gone yeah, yeah. through her like forty thousand iterations of buffs and, and and nerfs and she's now in a spot once again where she's good on infernal shrines like i wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing more and more Kroby on tomb of the spider queen because that's you, where she used to have a lot of value too sorry do you go uh do you go w build on Krumi now like what's the what's the what's the word on that is it is, i know the q build like the the t bronze towns got buffed W, yes. There was a, a couple W talents that got buffed though, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think, d did all of her numbers in general get buffed? I think it was an overall, like, good patch for her. I, I want to say that it was probably more towards the Dragon's Breath, which is her W, if I'm not mistaken. And then the Sandblast um, might have had some tweaks and adjustments. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Look at that. I, 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 I feel full, full Sandblast build is, is what I've been seeing more and more. Okay. I, was, I, was got, I got excited because I literally called all the bands. And Valmar's banned out. That's, I, <laughs> I've been paying attention. You did. I just looked up and I was like, oh, yeah, no, that's that's a Deathwing. That's that's literally three bands to Valimar. And um, I mean, honest to God, like that feels like you, you deserve some applause because you've managed to have attention. an entire team ban you. But um, we actually see the snag of the Urel and then a Deckard as well. And Val yeah, this I mean, this, and this is this is actually like the funniest part about banning a character out is like or a player out then they just pick another character it's like mm -hmm. it's a, a certain point when does it actually work right uh, obviously There's putting a... a player on something they're maybe a little less comfortable with is good at times but um you know getting your rels 
you know, how could we ever be mad? And and here we go with Liam getting that Matthew that I was hoping that we'd get to see out of him and into uh, Urel, uh, one of the probably more mm-hmm. unfavorable matchups. My only concern with this comp, you know, Chijugion Diablo, something you see a lot. It's one of his main characters. Uh, my only concern with this comp is actually just the objective. Uh, just kind of those shrine getters, right? The people that get mm-hmm. those, get the skeleton so, kills. Yeah. Who, who's who's yeah. doing that for this comp, right? Uh, I actually, Ralph's Raiders could use a gray main here. That'd work out really well with them. <gasps> or a butcher? Question mark. Is that a? I think it's Tiger AFK. We'll see if we see a dog. I don't, dude. I don't know. Oh, I take it. I take. I mean, I'm take down. These. It's just. It was GM, but I lagged. But we can butcher. I'm literally I'm seeing the draft chat. It it's saying it's a gray main. There, Tiger's saying it I'm, was gray main. I'm gonna make I him lagged. play butcher. I'm making him play butcher. Hebby just right go next. <laughs> Hebby's on third. I'm making him play them. it. And we're we're HEC no, no, rules now. No no no. This is this is no. We're going. We're no, we're go, we're doing it. We're there's there's no there's no take. I mean there's <laughs> this was not this is not a good pick, but this is happening. You know. Honestly, you know what I could work. It yeah, could like, work. it can't. It really can't, Bob. But I respect it. I like where you're. I like where you're at. That's the. I'm gonna be. Right? I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna be the reality check here. This is not gonna work. This is gonna be a very hard game. I remember. I remember one time turning to Jay How during Tespa Collegiate Series, and I said, Jay How, what if they used to be a StarCraft pro? And he just goes, How are you so optimistic still? <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> on the left hand side we got Ralph's Raiders they're going to be up one in our best of five series we got Tremor on the ETC Carbon going to be on the Mephisto we got Valimar on the Urel, Hebby's going to be hooting on the Deckard and Tiger JK on the Bloodthirsty Butcher and for the band is Bruisers Mason Blaze going to be rocking that Sylvanas Legacy on the Ana Vespertine going to be playing the Matthew Centurion a little crummy gnome and Shijuggy on that Diablo should be a fun game, though, overall, I think. Uh, this is going to be a really good game. Um, pretty standard talents across the board at the start. We are going to be seeing chopped meat for that butcher. Um, Malfiel actually going to be going into Fear the Reaper, so no on a pale horse or anything like that. They're actually going to be going for that uh, activation for movement speed as well as the ability to pass through enemy heroes, much like how Dahaka can pass through enemy heroes during Dark Swarm. Um, that's gonna be charged from butcher, but it's gonna be canceled. We're gonna be seeing, I think, a lot of those where it's just mm-hmm. like threatening with the with the butcher charge, but then they they cancel just to kind of force back the enemy team. Either way, we are also actually I want to point out we do have field study for the Decker Kane, something I see here and there, but not not too often. What is a uh, field study? Is that the spell power? Each enemy yeah. hero hit by the scroll ceiling grants twenty percent spell power for sixteen seconds up to forty percent. So it's a lot of spell power here. Tremor actually taking a ton of damage. Juggy with a wall bang. And flip Tiger though, on that butcher, is he gonna be able to take out Mason? Not able to pick him up. A lot of damage from both sides here, actually. Chijuggy being pretty aggressive for only 10% health, but I guess he has the Ana behind him, and everyone's gonna be topped off. I mean, both of these supports are like insanely good sustain healers. Oh good. So the like after the fact fight, like healing, I guess, is, is you'll basically see everyone at full health. Um. It's going to be those in the moment where, you know, the potion might not hit the right target or maybe the healing dart doesn't connect to the right person or misses even at times, right? It's a very small skill shot. Uh, like, the, the, that's their weaknesses as supports, right? Obviously, these players are really good, so we typically don't see that as much. But uh, there is a world where Chijuggy's very low and maybe he goes for a charge. And the Ana misses the cube because of it. So it'll be interesting here. Valmar actually doing a good job there to freeze the lane, uh, trying to keep it on his side. The one thing about Matthew, you know, he's not very good at getting ganked. Uh, obviously, with that uh, Fear the Reaper at level one, he can run away, but uh, he is going to have to play a little safer there for the rotations against a comp like Butcher. Butcher charging in with 27 fresh meat on them. We'll keep you up to date on the stacks as the game goes. Or if the butcher's just going to be a vegan in this game, we're not we're not too sure how that's going to turn out for them. Um, but right now, Valimar doing a little double soak as well as I think there's a little bit of a, a lag in some of the rotations into lanes. Um, Tiger also 
making sure they're gonna be able to get all this meat as well. Yeah, I mean the big thing with Butcher, it's like it's like Nazebo or Asmodan, like any hero that needs to get that stacking to get their main value, you're gonna be focused on that at the beginning as the power slide comes out from ETC, just a little harassment onto Mason Blaze. The first objective phase will be arcane and in mid lane. Uh, we actually have Malthia grabbing the camp on the right hand side, Butcher grabbing the camp on the left. A little bit of a later grab on this camp. This might be late for the objective, giving prioritization into positioning onto the side of bandits bruisers. We'll see what happens here as uh the announcement comes through and everyone kind of grouping up towards mid lane. Yeah, the, the, there might be an instant tap here, but they want to make sure to clear up the waves. There is a misstep that a lot of teams have, I think, on this map in general, uh, where they, they'll they lose XP. Carbon possibly caught out at the sleep does connect. Centurion getting a little excited there, uh, throwing his combo before the sleep lands, uh, missing a lot of that damage, but able to get out of there from Valmar and it looks like the fight's gonna begin here potentially Sylvanas opting to just run it down bottom doing the Sylvanas Grandmaster rank gameplay here uh, as you see the fight breaking out Jajuggy caught out from the Uralheimer is able to flip her away get out of there with it on, on it supporting him and Tiger actually took a ton of damage from the crummy there so this objective is definitely still possible for Vanus Bruisers we have Power Slide for ETC getting in here. Butcher Charge was... Oh, actually, there was a Sleep Dart that stopped it. I was, I was like, something, something stopped it, because all of a sudden we just see Butcher, like, the mark goes away. But uh, this is actually looking like Bandit, excuse me, Ralph's Raiders are going to be able to grab this, and they have the talent tier down. But since Sylvanas is just, well, as you said, running it down bottom lane, <laughs> um, they know they, they know this is a consistent 4v5. They have that vision of Sylvanas on their front gate, and they're saying, they're saying that first objective is more important than this front gate. Savannah saying otherwise, but they're going to defend against this, and let's see what value they get on the side of Ralph's Raiders, because the other thing to note, too, is a lot of teams kind of forego this first Immortal push, and they end up just, uh... That was really, really smart. Sorry, I just, I realized what Chromie did. She used the time stop on Diablo, so that way they don't take the damage from the jump. But the jump aggro armor afterwards. Yeah. That was, because they went time troubles at four. That was brilliant. I was just like, why are you stopping Diablo? But that worked out so well for them anyways. It's just, um, and we're, we're kind of seeing gate going down, but no towers. So overall, <laughs> Savannah's split push actually gets more value out than the Punisher. Yeah, and I think utilizing their comp, knowing that they can defend fairly well. Uh, with the Diablo and, the, and even this crummy strategy, right? You have to imagine at this point, if you're picking crummy, you know the character pretty well. And so you, you're going to have like a mindfulness for these type of plays that you can be made. It's interesting too, you know, the time trap can stop butcher shards, for example. Yeah. Um, so that's an, another interesting interaction that we could see out of this player, right? Out, out of Centurion, a lot of pr kind of pressure on his shoulders i guess i should say as the game continues on and and we get to see more of this chromie gameplay I, I would imagine we're gonna go slowing sands right but uh, i guess he he has taken the um, no temporal loop there is no cleanse um nothing, there's really nothing trying to bully out carbon possibly every time he blinks in right bring him right back to you um mm -hmm. not able to e back out from there i actually really like that a lot as a counter towards this mephisto it's pick it was surprising. I was looking at it in the draft, and, and and I was sitting there like looking at it. I was like, they picked a Decker Kane, and they knew the Crummy was there. It's not like Crummy came at the end of the draft or anything. So they they knew they were they were opting and saying, you know what, Temporal Loop might be a thing, but we're just not going to be worried about it. And we'll see what happens here, as we do have ten talents here on both sides. Next objective will be Mortar, and that will be in top lane. I think the announcement for that isn't too far off. Our our, our objective is, I believe, it's like a two minute. Two minute 30 counter from when um, when the Punisher goes down for the next announcement or when it's up available. But Diablo finishes Souls out. That's going to be Temporal Loop on the Tremor. They get it one Sandblast on to them. And they're just going to be able to get the Power Slide out of there. Uh, really quickly to note, because we did finish out the uh, Souls on Diablo, as they dive into mid lane, they find the kill onto Malfield. It's going to be 100 stacks and Souls on the. There's 100 meat stacks for the Butcher. 14 meat Souls. On the for for ETC, we've got <laughs> full souls on Diablo as I'm all over the place on that, but I want to also note because I haven't noted it at all once again the first time for Chromie that level one is going to be 23 out of the 40 stacks. When she finishes that out, she will have an extra echo. The echoes are these uh, these little extra sandy people that are left on the map that when she fires the sandblast, it leaves one of those behind. So you'll have an extra one of those and during these shrine phases. That poke potential with the extra sandblast, oh, that could be devastating. Yeah, it's a really big power spike at level one once you get that quest done. Uh, just being able to have that additional clone, have that additional damage, another chance to connect those Qs, right? Uh, it's it's like, it's, it's massive. Uh, and I think it also just increases damage. Carbon actually engaged on here. Oh, there it is. Not 
enough damage though. Uh, they do lack of the damage just a slight bit. Uh, we do have Mathiel though with a potential mana boost, right? This is where a lot of their damage will come from from their comp. Um, so in the team fights later on, we'll probably see that. And the Sylvanas era, obviously very good at following up that. If if Ralph's Raiders tend to, you know, engage aggressively like they did there to protect Carbon, a uh, big Sylvanas silence coming over top of that could be devastating. This is, I, I'm watching the setup right now. Also, really quick, uh, Naza, thank you for the uh, 19 months of support. It's very much appreciated, our friend, as we have no 13 talents here. Half a level lead in favor for Ralph's Raiders and Bandit's Bruisers trying to step into the objective phase. It's going to be 4 to 6 when it comes to Skeletal Defenders. Mortar Punisher will be the uh, the prize if you're able to get all 40 of these Skeletal Defenders in right now. No initiation just yet, but Valmar holding, waiting with the Avenging Wrath. Does step forward, gets himself the armor, but charges in to the uh, Malfields. They also do drop the Lamb Slaughter onto them. There's going to be a Dirt of Hate out from that Mephisto, and they actually have somehow Vesper living through all of this oh. with the Tormented Souls. I cannot believe that no one's gone down yet as the Lightning Breath comes out. There's going to be the pick onto Mephisto, and they chase further out onto this. I honestly got so many heroics were used right there, and we get one kill McIntyre. What just happened? I mean, I guess I was what just happened is exactly what I just kind of was talking about. Is like Matthew with the nano boost is good. Like mm -hmm. that's what we got to kind of see there, right? Uh, and 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 focusing him when he has that behind him is going to be bad uh the it, trimmer did a really good job actually he got a slide on the back line was able to mosh up the chromie on and the ana but uh right before it mason blaze actually got a sylvanas arrow off and silenced the mosh pit which broke them free uh and, and they were able to assist that mathiel even more so it was important that legacy had got that nano boost out before the mosh actually connected on him um giving mathiel time to sustain here the punisher is going to jump onto the url no one really wants to touch her though i guess the building is turned off so Yurel's just going to do her best to kind of create pressure there. Still has her heroic up. Just going to look to jump away here. But guess what? Come on back. Uh, just kidding. You're still Yurel. You have an infinite movement speed, angel wings, armor, um, all, all the works. But they are going to be able to pick up that fort uh, for the price of the objective. So we take those in this uh, world of, you know, objectives equaling two towers and a wall, right? Can, can I just point out one, one thing really quickly? The self-healing from Malfield. I can see the stat right now. It's just shy of 13k. Self-healing. Ana has healed for 27,000. Just, just, that, that's just something I want to bring up really quickly. That <laughs> he is probably a healed like lot of almost 70% of that in that one fight though. I would say I would say the majority of that is just from that one fight. I agree. Yeah. Like that was, that was just such a wild fight. Oh my god, either way, 14's up on both sides, 1 to 1 in kills, we have our next objective in mid lane, will be a Frozen Punisher, that one should be announced here in a little bit, until then we're going to be having lane rotations coming out, a little bit of clear that needs to happen, as some camps were grabbed, but maybe a potential team fight. Tiger not going to get caught up by that one, also speaking of Tiger, we do have 166 uh, fresh meat stacks under them, so they need another 34 before they're able to get that completed. We got 33 stacks on the once again the first time for the Chromie. She only needs seven more sandblast to get the extra echo for herself. ETC has finished the proc rock, and the Diablo souls are full as well. And for anyone that is wondering when it comes to souls or any of those other information, that's going to be the charge for the Butcher. They actually, they're going to get thrown around here. Tiger making sure that they don't get picked off, because they if they, if they go down, they're going to be going to be losing a little bit of, of, of that fresh meat as the, uh, they had the Lambda Slaughter come out, but it didn't connect, the Durns of Hate will be there, there's a Mosh Pit that was interrupted, there's a Steel Wall, and listen, all the heroics are being used in this mid lane, it's going to be Ana for the ETC, Lightning Breath comes out, Valimar is going to be able to sustain themselves with the shielding, they get a couple potions from Decker Kane, and they actually manage to get away here, and I think it's just going to be a one-for-one -one trade, wait, mm -hmm. hold on, because they make, can they make something happen? Nice overpower, unfortunately, they still find the damage they need with the Mephisto as they chase in onto Vesper, cleanses will be just in time, Great they're only dealing a lot of damage, Tiger make, wants to make sure they don't go down, but they actually just finished their stacks 12 minutes of the game, which is much like the B with the baseline arcane rift or the kill boss protection. If you get it completed, you don't have to worry about dying and losing it anymore. Now you can just infinitely stack on the butcher meat by getting kills. I believe it's going to be 10 stacks per heroic kill at this point, which 
We'll see what they get to, but either way, they're at 16, so they don't need to worry about that. Or excuse me, they're not. They're at uh, 200 stacks. So they don't need to worry about that anymore, as they do have 16. That was a crazy fight. Uh, I think like mm -hmm. big brain there from Tiger to use that unsolvable to make sure he doesn't get rewinded back. Um, and then Chromie ice blocking the Lamb of the Slaughter, uh, all of that whilst I think we had a sleep dart connect onto one of the backline healers. Um, yeah, it was just so back and forth actually. The, the teams are doing a good job of bouncing their heroics. Um, we even saw the Sylvanas silencing out the ETC there again. Um, I do think that uh, the Malthiel got stay wild and listened there, right? Uh, during the nano, so he wasn't able to just go like ape like he was the last fight. So they did do a good job there. Trimmer actually caught out here. 100% heal reduction. Looks like Liam looking to push that, potentially kill Trimmer. Able to take him down now. Uh, Balmar doing a good job in the back line here as well, almost knocking out Legacy on the Ana. He does not have his heroic though, so he can't tank forever. Is going to be picked up there. Chijuggy with a heal grenade and some Qs coming from Ana. All of that armor as well. Going to be 75% resistance. Tiger JK looks like he is going to fall here as well. Chijuggy, no devastating charge to chase down Carbon. That's a lot of heals though, Carbon. You won't do it. You won't engage. <laughs> you probably got. Go in, go in. I got yeah, heals just go in. You got, there's a few heals. You'll be I, I good. Got big, I, I got big pots. It's okay. You'll, you'll heal for you'll heal for 120% more. Um, I did see a question in chat. Scroll of Stone Curse from Decker Kane's level 16 is uh, Scroll of Ceiling deals 200% more damage when hitting at least two heroes. I know there's a question about Scroll of Ceiling damage, and that is going to be the amplification that you're wondering about. But we are going to be seeing another Punisher. I believe this will be the... Third one of the games, second one for the members of the Famous Bruisers, and they're trying to go up on the board as they are going to push into this mid lane, open things up for themselves, but they leave Malfiel on the objective, and that will allow them to be able to finish that out, and then they can have the Punisher push on through there. Can actually back off and grab a camp for some extra pressure in this mid lane siege. I like this call coming out from the members of Bandits Bruisers. Really smart. Um, they're actually going to leave one, well, two of these skeletal defenders. They're going to actually now rotate and look for more camp pressure in the bottom lane as well. This is a really good play, and I also want to say to you know everyone that's watching, um, like now with the tower, actually a fight looks like it's going to be breaking out. Valmar does have Sirok there. Probably going to pop that. ETC Mosh Pit going to be connecting on the Legacy. He needs to run, though. He does fall. Heavy falling as well. Mason was just on the back line, killing everything as well as the Chromie just throwing all sorts of sand from the uh, from the deep end there of the team fight. Um, but I want to like uh, you know kind of applaud Bandits here uh, for opting to take the fort and taking their time on the objective. Look, by taking the time on the objective, they forced the fight that they didn't want, and now they're going to get even more value out of this objective. Um, you see a lot of the time teams just force and get excited when they win things. But they can compound those wins even into more wins. Um, even to the point that, you know, killing a fort now when the other team's dead is really crucial because of the aggro change. And as we see, they're now walking to the core. Their core damage is a little suspect. But I do believe that they should be able to finish it, the Punisher, as long as his brain turns on, which sometimes doesn't exist. Uh, we'll start to put in some power here onto the core and a fight's gonna break out actually tiger diving back line on the chrome or the on is gonna take out the ana and live there but it looks like it's gonna be an all-in from the side of the bandits bruisers they have that punisher still alive he's swinging his arms towards the core you love to see that centurion full health in the back as well and they're gonna be able to pick up game number two here in our best of five if, series if they were able to get the 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 kills they got a lot faster they would have definitely i think that would have been like a like a calaris core like a five percent core or something like that that would have been a close one but um the butcher you know it it, it dealt some damage <laughs> and that's what it did this character that's, legit that's... got everything he wanted in this world and was still not good let's just put it that way that's a rough go grammy and 100 would have helped mm -hmm. i think that <laughs> The, the comp would have been a, a little better with the Gray Man because of the range damage. Yeah. It's very hard to interact with Butcher into a Matthew. Like, it's, it's, a, it's very hard. You, you, you obviously want to charge him, maybe force the Unstoppable and then, you know, Lamb or whatever the case. But uh, having to be in the face of that character, his, his whole goal is to uh, dodge and, and drain while you try to hit him so you're like chasing something around that's trying to get away from you and with fear the reaper that becomes even more difficult right so uh yeah we, we 
Ha, I don't know. We saw what we, we knew we would see, but we actually have some gifted subs coming in here. Thank you to the anonymous gifter. Welcome everyone to the club. Um, we're actually we're also at 200 viewers right now, Baha. Hey, welcome everybody. We got a lot of people hanging out with us tonight. Thanks, thanks for swinging by well, and checking out the stream. Well, while we're waiting to figure out what these teams want to do, we can actually talk to all these wonderful people about the content that they're going to be seeing next week. Because next week, IHL will not be continuing. This is going to be the last <laughs> night of IHL Season 1. But don't worry. Don't worry. I'll bring it back. Until then, we'll fill your, your eyes, ears. Here's the storm needs. On Wednesday, as we are going to be having the CCL back. The CCL is going to be a uh, six-week event. 